Hey YouTube, Caliber on Modern, check us out. We are doing our tuning series. Yes, that's right, the anticipated long-awaited tuning series. I know I've been really busy doing work and whatnot, so it's kind of slowed down the channel a little bit, but not really, because I'm excited to bring this to you. So one of the hardest things with YouTube filming is figuring out exactly how we're gonna do things and how we're gonna bring it forward. So this tuning series is fantastic. I'm really happy about it. I actually wrote out the uh, steps that we're gonna do and the process and how to do it, so that way it can be done and released in a timely manner. So without further ado, let's dive into it. The first episode right now is e-steps and we're going to show you how to do that for your extruder it doesn't really matter if you got a voron or you got a ender it's all the same so happy tuning so a simple google search voron types of extruders we have a ton here look at this we have orbiters we have mini sherpas we have afterburner galileos uh m4s really i'm not even looking at the screen i'm just kind of naming off ones that are in the top of my head with all that being said, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you get the correct information. For me, I'm using the new G2SA, the Galileo 2 standalone, and I'm very excited about that. So one of the first things you need to figure out is exactly what your extruder rotation distance, gear ratio, and micro steps are, as well as the new run current. Run current does correlate with um, the rotational distance and everything and how much gearing there is, so make sure you pay attention to that. We're going to go into our printer CFG, scroll down to our E-steps. So I have a CAN bus, so it's labeled CAN bus extruder settings. I want to verify my micro steps are correct, K16, rotation, gear ratio 9.1, rotation distance was originally 47.088, but you see I have 50.855 in here. So that's what we're going to discuss and figure out why, I, why and how I got 50.855. So what you want to do is save and restart. And then once it loads back up, go ahead and heat your extruder back up. You don't have to heat your heater bed like I am. I just like having that bed hot because I'm going to be printing a lot today for some clients and whatnot. So anyway, uh, extruder is set. So let's go over to the printer and see what we're going to do. Two things that you're going to need is some scotch tape and a metric ruler that's capable of going at least 100 millimeters. It doesn't have to be this long. This one I have a 600 millimeter one. It is a Shinwa brand that I got off of Amazon and it works really well. It doesn't really matter what you need. You just need to be able to go 70 millimeters. So we're gonna take our tape and we're gonna barely put it on the 70 millimeter mark. There we go. Take your Bowden tube, pull it back a little bit. We need access to the filament. And we're gonna push down on everything, get it as square as possible and transfer the tape to the filament. Now, the reason I'm using tape instead of like a marker is because I'm using dark filament. If you're using lighter filament, you can mark it, but the issue with marking it is the way like a Sharpie is, it's kind of got a rounded nose. So you're not getting that accurate measurement. So we wanna make sure that we do this correctly. So the next thing to do is to go back to the PC and we're gonna run some commands. First thing you need to do is go to this website and the link to this is in the description below. You can definitely follow steps one through two, which we've already done. When you go to the console and type in a command, it's gonna be G1, E50, F60, hit enter. Now we're gonna go back to the printer and check out what is going on. As you can see here, it is like taking forever to go through. That's what we want because we wanna make sure that we get actual accurate E steps. What we're gonna do once this thing is done is we're going to measure the distance between this guy and the tape to figure out exactly where we are. I just do the tape, tape transfer method back and if you really wanna get scientific with it, you can use calipers on the ruler. Uh, I usually just kinda eyeball it and call it good because we're gonna take care of the rest of that with the extrusion multiplier. Okay, so it's done. So now we're gonna measure this. Again, I said I'm gonna do the tape transfer, so sorry my hand is in the way. Um, I wanna make sure that I'm getting accurate measurements here. So um, I need to get this straight as possible, release the tape from that, the best of my ability, and we're off. Okay, so I'm counting. Does I count it here? Okay, so here's the tape. I'm gonna count up to 15. Looks like I'm at 16 millimeters. So uh, let's go back to the PC and do some maths. Okay, so really simple. Um, I have 16 millimeters. So the math is as follows. We take our uh, actual extruded distance equals initial mark distance, 70. 
minus, what was that? 16, so 54. So we want 54. So we need to go back into our printer CFG. We need some numbers. So the rotation distance they gave us, 47088. Put that there. Actual extrude distance was what? It was 54. And I requested um, 50. So calculate it. And this is our new rotation distance. So 50.855. Now the stock rotational distance they give you is really determines on what kind of hot end you have. So different hot end setups, whether it's high flow, ultra high flow, and what kind of nozzle you have, all impact this. So it's really important when you change your hot end or a tip to go ahead and do this um, procedure. So from this point, I'm going to save and restart. I'm going to preheat my stuff up again. You could, if you really wanted to, and if you're uh, really good at it, write your own macro for this. But for me, it really doesn't make sense. So um, I need to go mark the filament again. Okay, same as before. We're gonna put our piece of tape on exactly 70 millimeters. We're going to go here. I'm going to push that on there. Oop. It's a little tricky over time, especially when you feel like you need a third arm. So just be, be mindful of that. Um, this doesn't have to be perfect. We're just going for good enough on this. That's up to you how good enough good enough is, but um, my advice is to try to dial this in the best as, uh, you can. All right, now that the tape is on there, we're gonna go ahead and hit the extrude command, G1 E50 F60 and let it come out. Again, the painful process, we know this is working. Thanks to the G2SA, we have this little gear knob here that helps us uh, shove in filament and pull it out. Um, it is coming out really slowly. Again, that is exactly what you want. You want it to come out slow so we can get an actual accurate measurement. So we're gonna go ahead and let that run its course and then take the measurement again by transferring the tape to see exactly where we're at. Okay. So now that that's done, we're going to do the tape transfer method one more time and figure out exactly how far off we are. Now, according to this, I am exactly at 20 millimeters, which is perfect for me. So my E-steps for now is complete. It can be plus or minus one millimeter, it's totally fine. We'll adjust that with the extrusion multiplier in the next video. So there we have it. Now I will say this in closing, if you don't have close enough standards, plus or minus one millimeter off of 20, uh, keep going with it. Uh, double check your calculations, make sure you're using the right gear ratio and all that stuff for your extruder setup. Now I will say this, on my stealth burner, when I first got it and installed it, I did this calculation about 20 times before I realized that it doesn't really matter. Now you can get it exactly 20 millimeters or you can be plus or minus one millimeter, like I said. That is gonna be taken care of with the extrusion multiplier in the next step when we get this thing uh, going. So stay tuned for that. Please like and subscribe and stay uh, tuned for episode two.